Good evening, everybody. Uh, December the 20th, 2022, over the meeting of council. I call to order. Uh, season greeting, happy or Merry Christmas, and uh, Happy New Year. Result of the agenda for the December 20th, 2022, regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We have Councillor Boychuk and Councillor White that are absent with permission. Result of the minutes of the December 6th, 2022, regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor or Deputy Mayor Morio, second by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Communications? 6.1 result of the PSCS update uh, dated December the 13th, 2022 from Bell be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? What exactly is this pertaining to? To my, oh, we don't have. Um, the fire chief mm -hmm. on, but if you want. Yeah, that's the emergency radios that the fire department, RCMP, and ambulance use. Okay. It's, it's the old fleet net system that's been upgraded to this new platform. So okay. the, it's the a letters. New pro, uh, province wide. Yeah, so. That's what I thought it might be about. I just wanted to clarify. And my other question was how is the service in use for those in our remote areas that we go out to? Um, it states, I believe, 99% of Manitobans are covered. So we're, I believe we're fully covered. It would be the far north that is it. Okay, so it's reliable, though? Like, For our area, I guess. Okay. For the discussion? Is... All in favor? Carried. 6.2. Result of the letter dated November the 26th from uh, Linda Carpenter. Uh, be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, second by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? Um, has this concern been raised with the Manitoba government on our municipal level at all with regards to landlords who are doing kind of minor upgrades and then jacking up rental rates? The letter indicates that there's been four apartment units in our local community that this is apparently the case and seems how we do have housing issues I'm just wondering if on a municipal government level we have taken I guess any action to look into it there's or not really any action that we can take if an individual a landlord chooses to upgrade their their building and um, if it's changing over to individual uh, metered apartments or whatever, then that's up to the landlord and then they set their, their rates accordingly and, and all the rates, like rental rates and all that are protected under legislation under the uh, Landlord's Tenancy Act, I believe it's what it's called. So when it comes to municipal, there is nothing really for us to do um, as far as individuals that like what we see here um, from Linda um, she can lobby the province and ask for something to be done but I don't think that the province would do anything there either there's a minimum criteria set for what, where they cannot and where they can raise the rates and as long as they meet that criteria they're able to raise the rates we can that's a provincial deal this is just for communication for council so they can see what no, I understand that, but when I'm reading that and I think about our housing concerns as we are, if they are just doing kind of bare minimum upgrades in order to significantly raise the rates, because I know Manitoba's on that 3% increase scale, but if they're just literally changing out some faucets and appliances and then jumping the rates up, that's also going to become a problem. An increased problem to our housing availability and issues because it's going to potentially extend that 
demographic that can't afford housing. So I guess my question is, is there anything we can do on a municipal level to support such lobbies um, with the government in raising concerns on our level about Go ahead. I would suggest getting, we would need to get data. We can't, uh, if we wanted to look at something like that, we would, we would have to prove that there are minimal upgrades being done because these buildings are old and it's all on opinion. Some people say they need a renovation, some people they don't. You know, maybe they don't want it to, you know, to be renovated so that the rent stays low, but these buildings are 50, 60 years old, some of them, and maybe they're in need of the renovations, maybe the renovations were not minimal, just needed. <clears throat> so we would have to gather the data and determine, you know, are they just meeting the threshold, or are they actually doing the renovations and this is completely warranted? And I, and I would suggest that if you have more questions on some of the building code and all that, maybe to visit with the building inspector too, and maybe he can update you on some of that stuff as well. Councillor Powell. Yeah, I, I see. I know there's quite a few people that have taken this to a residential tenancy branch, and they're, they're at, you know, a lot of the people that are living in these places. Um, I know at first there was lots of talk about this being raised, like the one building went from 525 to 900, but, you know, and I know that there was some renovations, and I'm, I'm not saying it's right, but I know that um, there was new fridges and, and stoves put in some of them, and so it was more than just, you know, I mean, just your sinks and taps. But it is, it's still, it's an issue because you've got lots of seniors in there that depend on it, and they're gone up to, it's, it's not 900, as they've said, like I know we just put someone in there, and it's like $720, so it went from 525 to 720. Um, CFO Gadita. Uh, yes, to echo what Councillor Powell said, uh, I contacted the residential tenancies branch and they said they can act only upon a written submission from a tenant. Well, thanks. Thank you. That's kind of what I was looking for. Okay, so further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.3 Results of the letter dated December the 7th, 2022, from the Municipal Relations. Be received, moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. The letter uh, from uh, the minister. Any discussion? Councillor Medwood. Um, I remembered when reading this that uh, while well, I was at AMM's, when I went past the, uh, how do they pronounce it, Armed? Is that how they pronounce it? When I went by their booth, they handed me a package for the town of Swan River, so I just handed that off to CAO Fool and asked them to scan it so we can all kind of have a review of it. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7, 7.1. Result of the Director of Public's re uh, Public Works Report be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.2. Result of the Protective Services uh, Report for, uh, for November, the two, uh, November 2022 be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood. Seconded by Councillor Bobbitt. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Um, under the Animal Control, it lists three calls for cats, two for dogs. I'm just wondering what the nature of the complaints and how were they handled? I, I don't have that information. I'll have to get that and get back to you. Okay, can you add it? Because I still haven't gotten the results from the previous uh, protective, protective services service. reports. Further yeah. discussion? All um, in favor? Go no. ahead. Um, on the second last line, of that report, it indicates met with Staff Sergeant Duncan already response planning for Asher. What is Asher? A S H E R. Off the top of my head again, I don't know. Uh, that. Uh, you don't remember that? I don't know what that acronym stands for. Okay. We will get back to you. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.3, 
resulted the November 2022 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have a few questions. Um, it indicated that eight calls were cancelled in November. Do we know what dates and why? We can look up the dates. Uh, we don't record reasons why they're cancelled. They just they just call them cancelled. We don't ask them why they're being cancelled. Okay, I, I would be interested in knowing the dates. Um, does the van operate even if the plows have not cleared the roads yet? Uh, yeah, we've gone out before after a snowstorm. Yeah. It, it's really up to the driver at that point if they're comfortable and how bad the snowstorm is, but we, we went out recently after the snowstorm. Yeah. Like it's not like all the roads are clear, now the handy van is operational. It's really up to the driver. Okay. Um, do the operators assist clients from getting from their homes into and out of the vehicle and to and from where they're going, basically? We can, we can once they're outside. We, we, we're, they, we're, they're told not to enter the home. Okay, so basically from the door to the vehicle, they do offer assistance? Yeah. Okay. and if they do require assistance, in, in, like generally, just to move, we, they, they have to call for an assist. We can't accept that liability. Like if, if there's a health issue and they need an ambulance to be moved, they need to call an ambulance. Okay, fair enough. And um, have our operators ever addressed any concern with regards to the roads and being able to provide services? Yeah, obviously, yeah. when there's a bad storm and we have a, hand, a handy guy call the next morning that someone's booked and yeah, they, you know, if, if it's going to get stuck, but it's up to the driver to, to say, yeah, I'm going to try. We know that how it works is going to have to pull the van out if they get stuck. <laughs> CFO Ganita? As a date of the cancellations, there was one trip on the 7th, one on the 8th, two on the 18th, two on the 25th, and two on the 30th. Thank you. Okay. Um, Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Carried. Okay, uh, 7.4, uh, <coughs> Council reports. Councilor Bobbick. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just going back to the AMM convention, I just uh, haven't spoke on it since been there. I found some of the stuff uh, interesting and factual, but some of the stuff I thought was still in the blanks. But anyway, just with that comment, uh, there was a comment made, and I don't know who it was, but I thought it was a really good idea. When we approach meeting the ministers at AMM, should we not try, and again, the words try here, see if everybody would meet as a valley, like all all the valley meet the ministers together because we probably all we have the same issues and again going back to that the bigger the numbers the more attention you'll get so maybe just something to think in the future but just an idea so. the the reeves and i have spoke about this oh, great. a little bit great. and and especially on items that are are mutual. truly mutual like uh, as a as a united front not necessarily things that may not be so okay. much no oh, no oh, great but it's, yeah that's a good perfect. point yeah. Uh, you've all attended the watershed. I think everybody was there. I was, I was glad to see you all show up. It was great. So there's kind of a meet and greet. Uh, just to go over the watershed, uh, I actually found out that I've been on the board for 15 years now. Uh, the board was uh, started in uh, 2007 with a funding of $241,760. This year we will be uh, up to a million dollars. We have, because of external funding and new growth programs and stuff. So over that next total of 15 years, approximately $6.2 million has gone back into the valley. So uh, just uh, how important that the watershed is. Uh, we also <coughs> talked with uh, Mr. Harvey on, we've been, the thoughts of a plow for in front of a truck. So that's kind of an ongoing thing. We'll be looking more into that. 
I was wondering about when we do snow removal on Main Street here, is there a timekeeper involved? Not specifically, no. Okay, just I just reading a contract there with the highways, they probably they stipulated something about a supervisor on the job. Uh, yeah, like there is uh, uh, a supervisor for the contractor. I know it would come at a cost, but it also protects the town of Swan River, and it does protect the contractor too for any questions of any hours. So just something, food for thought, I guess. Uh, landfill operations. Now that we're going to be moving into budget, has there been any thoughts of change of hours? Uh, there's a contract currently set up with the current hours. We did have an option for reduced hours, okay. uh, but it was decided to keep them the same. But uh, when that current contract is up, there'll definitely be a proposal that will include okay. reduced hours. What time frame is that? Uh, 2025, spring of 2025. Yeah. Okay. I'm just kind of bothered, like if some of that can be discussed at the committee of the whole. Too. Okay, okay. Um, just to compliment you on the cemetery, my uh, wife and I took a drive through there and we thought, boy, the roads need to clean. Next day, went back, they were clean. So, yes, thank you guys. There's going to be lots of people over the holidays here visiting the gravesite. So, thank you. Uh, just to speak a little bit of stuff on the shop, I explained to Councilor Medwood there that I hats off to the guys at the shop. I could be wrong on some of the prices. Uh, some of the grates on the curb stops there that get smashed by graders and other issues, they're $750 each, they're cast iron. Uh, Mike has undertaken to buy a plate steel for $1,700, which he'll make 10 of them out of them in his spare time. So these are some of the things that go on at the shop that these guys have given initiative to, and uh, I really appreciate it. These will be better because they're made out of iron, and he's also using the scrap off the curb stops to up. So great idea, so just wanted to mention that. Has there, I haven't talked to anybody, is there oil samples being taken for the grader? Uh, there should be, but I'll confirm that. Yeah, no, I just, it, it probably comes with that, I think with the warranty issues. The airport commission I wasn't able to attend. Uh, I'd also like to thank you, went down 212 the other day, and the brush cutting is down. So great, so that looks really good up there. And you will be receiving a letter from Quick Stop requesting a widening of driveway. So I told them to do it in the form of a letter. And had lunch at the down shop and it was great. So thank you. Good, thank you. Councilor Medwood. Uh, well, I did attend the uh, Swan Valley Watershed. It was very informative. Uh, learned quite a bit. I was actually happy to hear that they include some educational and partnerships and working with the farmers and the land and water there. So that was uh, a positive in my, my mind, in my books. Uh, I have let Director Harvey know that I have the snow removal policy uh, on review in my mind. So once I have some questions lined up, I'm gonna request a meeting with them just to get a little more knowledgeable. Um, attending the uh, Public Works Wings luncheon, uh, that was actually very informative. I got to finish off a tour at the Public Works building there. Director Harvey took me around. Uh, we didn't quite have time uh, when we went out. So learned quite a bit. Uh, Councillor Bobick uh, and uh, Darren Harvey kind of explained what he was just talking about with regards to our staff kind of thinking outside the box and saving us some money and putting their skills to good use, so that was good to see in here. I have been had a meeting with COPP and we are looking at doing more patrols during the days and the evenings. Uh, we It was brought up during our meeting, the Facebook concern that had gone out just I think days before about uh, the loitering around extra foods and giant tagger and the harassing of the customers and stuff. So, although uh, Henson has been trying to get across that there is no specific time to kind of suggest patrols because the crime's happening at all hours, it seemed that that particular incident kind of spurred the group to, for some of the members to start thinking that maybe daytime patrols would be 
beneficial as well. So there's, uh, we've already had uh, a couple patrols happen uh, late last week and early this week. So we're going to try, and if, because we do have some members that are retired, so they're available kind of during the early evenings and when most people might be working to kind of help patrol and get the sun, well, be sighted so that it might deter them from those activities. The Immigrant Services Anniversary Dinner, I attended that. It was excellent food and event, and I was actually hoping Councillor White would be here because I was going to suggest that it actually uh, reminded me of an extremely mini version of Folklorama from Winnipeg, and I was going to suggest he might want to take back to one of his meetings maybe the suggestion of them organizing <coughs> some sort of similar type event where it could maybe go for a couple days. I'm thinking kind of like Valley Stage performers sort of do two or three shows, but uh, if they had little acts, because with Folklorama they usually do some educational on the culture, some dances and or performance customary to the culture, and I thought that might be something that might help them do some fundraising and also um, get those community groups kind of working together as well as allowing everybody else in the community a taste of their culture and their history. Uh, something for them to maybe think about. Communities in Bloom, I did receive an email from Manitoba Communities in Blooms. Um, I reached out to them at AMMs and they got back to me. So I have a um, great big document on their programming for 2023. It looks like they're going to be doing full programming again in 2023 and there's a registration form that I haven't had a chance to look at as I just got the email the other day but it looks like whatever it is about has to be registered by April 30th so I'll hopefully have had time to review all that before the next uh, meeting and Swan Valley Communities that care I've reached out to them they responded to me but they indicated something about I have to be a board member is that how it normally what were you, what's this in regards to? Um, I reached out to them and let them know that I was the counselor appointed to the Swan Valley Communities I Care and their response was indicating that somebody would follow up with me because I would need a criminal record check to become that a board member. That might be one of the requirements. Become a board member. So I was just wondering, is that typical of whomever's done this There in seems the past to be more and more of that now, so you probably yeah. will have to have that done. Okay. When I was on the committee, it was not required, but now I'm sure that it maybe has changed. And when you say the word committee, is that equivalent to being on the board? Well, it's a committee of a whole bunch of uh, individuals from the, from the community, and yeah. it's again, I don't know, board committee. I I've always known it as being a committee, not necessarily a board. So I guess that's what I'm trying. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I guess that's yeah. what I'm trying to clarify. Is there a committee and a board? And is there maybe a misunderstanding? Because I'm, I'm like, um, I, I'm not really sure who is supposed to be there just kind of I'm to remember, as right. a representative or am I supposed to be there as a full-fledged board member? You, you want, Once the, the chair or whoever's in charge of it, they'll get in touch with you and, and give you the insights of exactly what it's all about. Okay. Because I was just like, whoa, that sounds like a lot more responsibility than I might have signed up for. <laughs> I got a lot to learn right here on the plate, but okay, I'll uh, continue to follow up with them. Uh, the Manitoba Age Friendly Committee, that is part of the reason why I am putting a new renewed effort into reviewing the snow removal policy, um, in part to make sure it's, it's meeting our seniors' needs. And that's where part of my questions with regards to the handy banner stemming from is kind of gathering some of that information because uh, since I don't have any real specific direction for this, I'm just going to apply seniors' concerns to basically every aspect of kind of what comes across our plate here until I find out some more clear direction. So, um, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, Probably in the next week or so, I'll be taking a more thorough review of that and meeting with Mr. Harvey and see what we can do and make sure we're meeting their needs as well as everybody else's. Okay. That's it. That's it. Okay. Uh, Councillor Powell. Okay. Um, I attended the Swan Lake Watershed. Um, very interesting. Uh, very 
very knowledgeable in there. I was told, uh, probably the first time I've ever been in the watershed. So, but honestly, just truly amazing the things that you know that are going on in that in there, um, and just how knowledgeable their, the staff was and accommodating to showing us everything around. Um, so yeah, that was a really good. I was really glad, and I know they talked about in um, this next year doing a little bit more in promotions. You know, what I mean to promote themselves, so which I think is great because I think we should all have an idea of what it is. There will be, just to let you know, there will probably be a water festival that's held up at the Interpreter Centre on the way to uh, Walmart Lake and we have, I think it's great fours and great vibes from the schools right over there and we have water tables and all sorts of things and give a whole day these things, so that'll be it. It's called the Water Festival, so that, mm -hmm. without COVID now we're hoping that happens again, yeah. so it's pretty interesting. No, it was, just, I was, it was very great. Um, I think I've heard lots of people are very happy with the snow clearing that's taken place in town and how it's moved along quite quickly. We had too much. Um, we had, we were supposed to be scheduled an interagency meeting for yesterday, but it was, it was canceled. Um, I think that the main thing there was um, <coughs> looking for a solution for a warming spot for people. That was a big, big thing, a part of their agenda there and I think we'll be speaking more in the next couple of weeks on that. We have, uh, there's been a lot of people asking about regarding the arena and outdoor rink. I know that's been a big concern where everybody's wondering what's what's happening with the outdoor rink and stuff like that. And, um, open it, today. Oh, it opened today? Yeah. Oh, good. <coughs> well, there we go. I wish I would have known that two hours ago. <laughs> but no, that's great. The word will spread well. So. Yes, yeah. good. Um, Mayor Jacobson and Derek and myself have conversed on meeting with uh, Charlene Gulak with the Rural Economic Development um, as well. Mayor Jacobson suggested we arrange a meeting with partners in regards to WISE. So that's, I think, going to be on our agenda for the next little while. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you. Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, I guess since I got back in the last couple of weeks, it's been uh, fairly steady. Uh, last week, uh, as for the rest of the council, I attended the come and go for the Swan Valley Watershed. Very informative. Um, thanks for the two uh, individuals there for hosting. Um, on Monday, uh, His Worship and myself and CEO Poole, we had a Zoom meeting with uh, the City of Thompson, uh, their CEO, uh, Mayor Smook, and Deputy Mayor Valentino as a result of our um, late night evening uh, networking that we had with them and sharing ideas and our commonalities in crime and that so um, we had an I guess an initial meeting um, to discuss where they've been where they're going um, some of the challenges that they've had and um, the path that they went down that we are going down the same um, path with the uh, I can't remember the name of the off the top of my head the, project that we're community about. safety and well-being that's a community safety and well-being so they've offered uh, their guidance and where uh, they've had challenges and what's worked and what doesn't work so we don't have to go down the same rabbit holes that they had so uh, they're very um, accommodating and uh, want to continue uh, supporting us and us supporting them bouncing the ideas and discussions back and forth so um, that's one of the uh, uh, fruitful conversations that we had with our networking as a result from AMM and uh, ties um, for um, Deputy Mayor Valentino with her uh, children, I believe it is, that played at the Stampeders here. So yeah. um, they they see um, our community just like ours. So it's a shout out to them that it's much appreciated. Um, Last night had the uh, planning district uh, inaugural meeting after the election. Um, besides just the basic uh, normal housekeeping duties um, with new board members getting in place, uh, there was a new re or a new chair and vice chair uh, selected, and Reeve Gate is the new chair of the planning district with uh, Councillor Bartell, uh, Derek Bartell from Minnetonas Bozeman as vice chair. Okay, so. Um, we had a presentation and regarding uh, their need for the development plan review. Um, so we had some initial discussions on that and that will be coming to the G8 uh, meeting for further discussion regarding uh, funding of it and if there's a need or how much of a need there is for it. So uh, last Sunday we had uh, 
our council uh, Christmas supper, which was attended by uh, all of us. It was great to uh, just have uh, some downtime and enjoy a good meal and some discussion. So that was greatly appreciated. Um, also, I want to extend my congratulations to uh, His Worship as he's a new uh, Parkland District uh, Director. I don't know if that was mentioned at the last meeting that I wasn't here, but uh, congratulations on that. And as a result, uh, with uh, uh, some senior leadership at AMM of uh, twisting my arm and nudging that I nominate you for it. So um, I think we're in good hands with you representing uh, not only the town of Swan River, but the Valley and the entire parkland and lobbying uh, along with the other directors in the province, uh, to the province and FCM and the feds, drove government to uh, bring our concerns forward and hopefully we can get some of that. So. Um, also, I would like to uh, congratulate um, former councillor uh, Delorier, um, as uh, he uh, informed us today that uh, Minister Eileen Clark contacted him, and he is now part of the municipal board. So, be careful what you uh, wish for <laughs> when you say uh, that you still want to be involved somehow. So, your name does make its way through some channels and. He is on the missile board as he thought he expressed interest in that. So um, it just goes to show that just because you're not on the council here, um, along with everybody else, there are individuals in the community that uh, uh, care about this community and want to move things forward and expand uh, our knowledge uh, by participating on all these external boards in different uh, areas um, to advocate for the valley or even just to get the, how the inner workings of those senior levels of uh, government and that work. So uh, congratulations to him and I'm sure he'll do us fine. And as finally, um, I just want to wish everybody happy uh, new year and Merry Christmas. Um, uh, this will be our last meeting before the holidays until we return on January 3rd. Thank you much. Okay, well thank you very much. <clears throat> I don't really have much more to report uh, than what was already covered, but definitely the uh, the meeting with the mayor and deputy mayor of Thompson with their CEO on Monday was um, was very enlightening and, uh, and knowing that we are moving in the right direction as far as the community goes and uh, the province said that they see us as uh, working in the right way and, and 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 have the right groups you know working together. Um, we will continue to, to do where we're on the track that we're working on, but definitely um, Thompson is is, uh, is there to help us and support us in, in any way uh, that we can. So our next steps will will obviously continue on with this report, but also I plan on uh, meeting with the uh, the mayor of the Paw and also the mayor of Dauphin here in the next month as well to discuss. Um, I'll have chances to do that during some of the AMM visits, but also uh, some one-on-ones. I hope that I'll be able to take the time or, or have time with them on some of our common uh, issues. Um, being said that, um, we have some big meetings uh, to, for with the AMM in January, some strategic planning sessions that we have uh, planned out, as well as meeting with some of the municipalities and bringing forth the issues that we have and definitely crime and, and health care is going to be some of the top uh, pieces that we're going to be bringing forward. So if any of you have any other items that you want to bring forward, uh, let me know. And without, or basically with that, um, I thank also the watershed for putting on that, uh, that function that day. I didn't get a chance to do that, but I will be going down to the, to the office one day to to uh, see what uh, was presented. So do uh, appreciate everything that they do for, for this community. Uh, and, and also with, with that, I've been meeting and discussing many issues with our Reeves. I, I have to say that the conversations that I can have with some of our Reeves right now, are, is, it's, 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 it's stunning actually. And, and it's been really um, very productive. Uh, I spend a lot of time on the phone with Reeve Mahalchuk today. I had a chance to sit and uh, have dinner with um, Reeve Gade uh, a couple nights ago, and uh, we're continuing with these uh, this, the, these discussions and, and working together. So that's the goal, and that's what we've always kind of set forth for. 
And, uh, and also with that, I would say that, uh, you know, we a couple months in with the new councillors in position and uh, getting into their committees or boards uh, that they are involved with. And it's, uh, it's a lot of information to absorb. And I think that everybody's doing a good job and uh, it'll, it'll get better as, as time moves, moves on. But I do thank you for um, the, the work that you're doing and it makes this team work together and, 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 uh, and be as good as we can be for the whole entire Valley. So, and with that, I also have to say, Merry Christmas to each of you and Happy New Year and, and also to all our uh, staff and administration uh, for the town of Swan River and, and all the residents of uh, the town of Swan River as well. So with that, I'll move on to Mr. Poole, who I also maybe invite maybe to report a little bit on the airport commission since we don't have anybody here tonight. I hate to put you on the spot with that, but maybe if you can kind of give us a little bit of uh, some details on that meeting since we don't have uh, uh, a councillor here to report on that tonight. Uh, yeah, I guess I want to start just apologizing for not attending the, the council supper on Sunday without notice. And uh, just to note that the, the staff uh, recognition uh, Christmas, I guess, get together will be Thursday at 3 o'clock. Uh, so council moves, I've contacted the instructor at uh, the regional school uh, to look at a heraldry project to see what they can do for a town crest and give them the guidelines of, of uh, creating that in the new year. Uh, for the employment training project, we held interviews for the job coach and the admin assistant, so we'll be making those decisions uh, early next week mid-next week, I should say. Uh, we are putting out EELS uh, notice uh, on our website and on Facebook or the town's Facebook page, uh, a little advertisement on the Community Safety and Wellbeing Program, uh, who's there, the, the point of it, uh, that we are a pilot project and basically a summary of what that entire program is. On uh, just a couple meetings, we attended the, the grand opening of the government building in Dauphin uh, for the MMF. It was good to sit down with Vice President Chartrand and talk about relations and, and uh, hopefully a productive future. Uh, met with Staff Sergeant Duncan last week to talk about local crime and he did uh, give us permission to say that uh, there will be a full uh, a crime study done in Swan River, so we'll expect that uh, sometime in the new year. So that will be uh, pretty valuable. And then scheduling a meeting with uh, e uh, Charlene Gulak for the Regional Economic Development Officer. See where we can go with our new committee and the Airport Commission. Uh, <clears throat> I guess we appointed. Stuart Wamsley is the uh, chair, <coughs> and Derek Bartell as co-chair. Uh, there was there was nothing really said to be done on the contributions. We just basically informed all the reps uh, to get it to their councils and bring it to the G4, uh, basically to decide what they want to do and be prepared to discuss their contribution position at the G4 on February 6th. Other than that, it was business as usual. We did pass a, I don't want to say interim, I guess it is interim budget for 2023. So that budget will likely be passed in the new year. <clears throat> there was just a little disagreement in discussions. Uh, I don't know, CFO Ganita, if you wanted to add anything, that's all I have on the airport commission. Well, uh, yeah, uh, Stuart Wamsley was appointed chair, Derek Bartel, vice chair and uh, they approved did approve an interim budget just so that there's authority to carry on with uh, spending money and so forth but uh, they requested uh, several changes and uh, 
yeah, the, the request came to discuss the proposed revisions to the agreement between the municipalities at the mention G4 meeting to, and so the municipal uh, levies have are not uh, calculated yet. The, the interim budget just shows total required from the municipalities as a whole with no breakdown between the municipalities. Okay, thank you. Um, just finish your report and then we'll go to any questions. Uh, and that, that's all I have. Okay, go ahead. Um, regarding the airport commission, uh, I'm, again, I'm new, so the, are Bartell and Walmsley not both from the same region? Yeah. And do we? They have two reps on each, from each municipality. And is it normal for our boards to have a chair and a vice chair from the same region, or do we normally intermix? There's them? nothing in the airport commission, I don't know what we call it, constitution or agreement that says that they can't be. So they were, they were nominated and approved. Okay, that's all I want to clarify. And the other one was, is when we discussed this in a previous meeting, we tabled it to have further discussion on the airport commission agreement. Do we know when that is going to be coming up again? Yeah, that was the conversation that Mr. Kanita had mentioned, that that would come up at the next G4. So it's been, it'll be tabled for a little while. Okay. Because I thought our group was going to be discussing it. Yeah, okay. we'll probably have a chance to talk about it in the cow meeting again, yeah. just to do okay. a refresher. Yeah, but the will, resolution will come forward for a while. We will have to present our position at the G4, so we'll have to discuss it at a Cal meeting and be solid on our position. Okay, because I just remember we had a lot of questions that there wasn't answers for at the time, which is part of the reason why we yeah. tabled it. So I was just like, okay, I'm not, I don't have those questions at the top of my head right now, but um, I wanted to make sure we got back to covering those before we hit the G4. Thank you. Yeah. So you're complete? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, eight, eight point one. Result of the Chief Administrative Officer be authorized to sign the video services contract with Mountain Dweller Media as per attached Schedule A. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? Um, just being new again. Uh, does this have any bearing since this is for 2023 billing? Does this have any, like, can we authorize it right now, being that we haven't put the budget through? I'm not sure of the process. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, the, everything, everything's fine. We can't spend any money, but we have an interim budget coming up later in the meeting. I see that, but I was just wanting to make sure because I'm not familiar with the protocol, so yeah. thank you. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Result of the fee schedule for 2023 be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Medwood. Seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? I have a lot, so if there's anyone who wants to go before me, feel free, but otherwise I have a few. <laughs> Questions. Did everyone get the email I sent today just to review some questions that Councillor Wojcik had? Yes, no? there's a couple okay. of mine that overlap with hers, but... Okay. Um, okay, so the first one I have is page two under the business license fees. We have a transient license fee. What exactly does that pertain to? Uh, someone who isn't from the Valley or the G4. So if there's the, the guys who uh, fix the windshields in the extra fruits parking lot. Fruit trucks. Fruit trucks. Carnival. Okay. Yeah. And does that tie into, because I know we have craft shows that happen regularly, um, but we've also mentioned about possibly bringing a trade show back into the town or the area, so would that apply to people coming from out of the G4 to attend those? Uh, if the, 
I don't know. I'd have to look at it. If a Tra trade show would traditionally be in trade shows, it's like when we went north, we don't pay a business license when we're at right. the trade show. So I think those are traditionally. I think it's not a business; it's just a show. Them, inviting them to present themselves, I don't think it would be yeah, a good idea to smack them with a two hundred dollars. Well, I'm kind of thinking the same thing, so that's why I just want to know. Um, it does reference a bylaw number seventeen slash twenty sixteen, but I could not find that online. Uh, okay. There's three other bylaws referenced within the fees, or two additional other ones. Is it possible when we're sharing documents like that that we can also share the bylaws that might be? Yeah. Um, related to them. Um, the next three tax certificates, raffle licenses, tree nursery and materials and goods. What exactly are all these for? Uh, well, I guess tree, tree nursery is the, the nursery that we have and, and at one point anyone could take a tree for free. But uh, we noticed that it was costing us a lot of money in, in filling holes or, or cultivating or however there has there is a there is a cost to to operating a tree nursery so we did set a price per tree to cover those costs. I didn't know we had a tree nursery, so thank you. Okay, I'm gonna let uh, Mr. Harvey go and then CFO and Gadita. And then the material and goods that's uh, for the water and sewer occasionally. We have a part that a plumber needs, so we don't want them to use us as their warehouse. That's why it's set relatively high, but if they're in a pinch and they can't get it from their supplier, then they can get a piece from us, and then so it's our cost plus the percentage. Fair enough. See if we I believe the question was asked uh, what a tax certificate is. Uh, it's a legal document produced by the a municipality at the request of a law office uh, stating what the outstanding property taxes are on the particular property and if there's any other bills associated with it and so uh, it's an important document because it's basically the town saying this is what the outstanding taxes are owing this is the taxes that they're paid and uh, if a municipality makes a mistake the municipality is liable because it's a it's an official legal document so it, it's always preceded by a request for information under the freedom of information act so it's it's not just the preparation of the tax certificate there's also a fax that comes ahead of time so there's some and sometimes there's some investigating required digging into things so that's why the fee is set that it's where it's at so that believe. that fee of forty dollars covers all expenses related to that tax certificate <coughs> well as is usual with any kind of a government fee um, they're often just a nominal fee like governments do not set their fees like say accountants or lawyers do where they charge so much per hour governments set their fees at what they think the public can bear and like governments are not a money making things so, uh, it's comparable to what other municipalities charge I, I guess all I'm looking to clarify is that the fee we're charging of $40 is going to cover any expenses that we as a municipality incur obtaining that certificate. Are you taking the, what the, uh, CFO Benita is saying that if you're taking the time uh, on average probably what, what an individual might spend on it depending on what the request is or what, it, what the the necessity of the certificate is you may not completely collect it because you're not basing it on on the hour spent if it's not it, it's a nominal fee like he said and we're at what we feel it might be fair for one that might be able to afford to to pay 
okay, versus so a private business where they'll set it accordingly to certain rates, like an accountant officer or whatever, where they are <clears throat> trying to cover that expense, but maybe make a little bit of money too. Okay, so I might have misunderstood. So then this is just basically covering labor hours to do the work, like there's no additional fee from the municipal government to pr provide that certificate? We generate the certificate. We generate, okay. See if we'll did you want to go again? Uh, yeah, I think another question was raised uh, uh, on raffle licenses. So the raff raffles are, as with any kind of gambling, is covered under the Criminal Code of Canada. And so the Criminal Code allows the municipalities to issue raffle licenses to charitable or religious organizations that operate within the boundaries of the municipality where the prize payout will not exceed $3,000. And so uh, we're taking on uh, some uh, liability there, I guess, because it is uh, governed under the criminal code. And so the municipality can, can be uh, reprimanded if the issues or raffle licenses inappropriately. Okay. And yeah. so that, so that the previous fee had been there for decades, and so it's time for an increase. You answered my second question of what our maximum limit was, and if it's three thousand dollars, I would concur with Councillor Boychuk in raising that to twenty-five. The resolution that it would have to be uh, amendment amended. So uh, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's something that we do here right now. But we technically we should update the fee schedule. Right. For the attachment must be correct at the time of resolution, so we may have to table at the end of this, depending on any changes. There. Right. Um, there's a lot of questions. I don't know how much further you want to get into it. Um, like I had uh, I reminded councillors that if there's fee schedules or questions about details on, on on our billings or whatever, that to spend some time with the CFO prior to, because I know that there's a lot of questions and, and there's a lot of information that we need to uh, to go through. But anyways, with that, uh, just increasing it in in the discussion of a resolution, we can't do that. Unless it's amended, council would have to vote on the amendment. Yes, we could list those in the resolution. Yeah, like ahead. if there's a few changes, we could pass this one, and then so that we can implement these fees, and then uh, if there's ones that they want to increase, then we could just pass an an updated fee schedule, so that way. These ones can be implemented. If there's ones where people want or where council wants to reduce them, then we wouldn't necessarily want to pass this because it'd be going up and then down. But if if the only change that council wants is to increase certain ones, then we could pass this so we can, you know, I can go to landfill, implement all those, and uh, at the next meeting, any ones that want to be increased, we could just present an updated fee schedule and then that one could get passed because it's just one. Uh, just a resolution for the fee schedule it doesn't require three. That's three right. Okay. Do you have more? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, page three, uh, office building rental rates, the committee room. Where exactly is the committee room? That is considered that's, the committee room? That's considered the committee room. This, this, there was supposed to be a partition underneath this wall. This was council chambers, that was committee room. It's usually when there's a committee in here, we'd like them to sit at the table, not in council's table. Uh, if, they're, if they're using Zoom, of course, we use the table, but okay. that is the committee room. Okay, fair enough. I was just curious to know where the committee room was. Um, the recycle building and rent charges, I already kind of directed a question before I got to reading this document, but thank you for your answer, <laughs> Director Harvey. Um, there's a significant difference in rates between the what the town charges and what Swan Valley West charges. And when it says half building and full building, 
does it just mean if we own the building half and half, does it literally just mean half the building of the town and then half of that, or does it literally mean the whole building and half the building? What, what's the question? Well, the rates for half a building under the town is $1,100 per month, but under Swan Valley West charges, it's $300 per month. So I'm not sure I'm understanding the difference in rates there. We, we check with a, a realtor and find out what the rental charges are for commercial space, and that is a commercial building. So that's where our rates are, and if Swan Valley West wants to charge less, they, they're allowed to do that. And how, how does that work? Because it's my understanding that we're using it for equipment storage, so is the entire building being used for equipment storage? Uh, no, we, we do not enter their half of the building. Okay, so they can rent out their half the building still? Yes. Okay. I was okay, so that's the difference in the rates there. Um, handy van fees. Moving on to page four. Um, why are we adding mileage on in addition to the flat rate fees for the um, with? The second line where it says, within town of Swan River limits, contributing residents after hours subject to driver availability. Why do we have a flat rate fee plus mileage? I'm, I'm asking pre predominantly because in the top line where we also are looking at a contributing resident, there is no mileage fee. That's a good question. All the within town of Swan River limits, there is, there should not be a kilometer fee. I don't know why that's there. Okay, so possibly just a cut and paste type yeah, of error. Definitely. Okay. Um, and then, what is the difference between a contributing resident and a non-contributing resident? Uh, purchase services. So Swan Valley West contributes to. The handy van through purchase service agreements. If we don't have agreement, they are non contributing. Okay. That's what I want to clarify. Thank you. Um, the other one I have on this one is outside Town of Swan River limits contributing residents after 5 p.m. or weekends, but every other line references hours of Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So do we need to correct that time in there as well? being after 4 p.m. That's another third one. Uh, that would be one, two, three, four from the bottom. Right. Oh, actually the third one as well. Good eye. I missed that one. Those can just be changed to four, eh? I, I, I don't think we can go for 20 minutes looking at a resolution. If there's errors in this, then I suggest that somebody table this. I'll table it till the next cow meeting. Okay. Or so moved by or Councilor. The, yeah, to next cow. Deputy Mayor Morio, uh, seconded by Councilor Bobic that we table. All in favor? Um, I have a question. Okay. <clears throat> it will actually be covered in, in that. I'll give you one more, but we'll move on. Well, after the that. question is if we're tabling, then that means it's going to a meeting where we can actually talk and discuss it because I have a lot more questions. That's what's going to happen. Okay. Yeah. Because it's going to go to a cow meeting because there's obviously some errors in this that we need to go through, and we, we're not going to go through it all in, in the night. Okay. So That's all I we, wanted to confirm because I'm like, I've got a lot of questions because I read through it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you have like one-off questions, like if it's yeah. not to the rate, if you just have a specific question, go to that department head and ask, clar clarify those questions. Go ahead. But at the same time, I'm learning and I'm kind of thinking the public might also like to learn with me and they might also be interested in these questions and therefore the answers. So would it not be nice to discuss this kind of stuff in a public forum where the public might actually have right. access to the questions and answers? Well, on things like this where, like I, I, 
I truly don't understand why these are the way they are with the 5 p.m. and 4 o'clock. I don't know why that's changed, but those are obviously copy-paste errors and were just missed in the review. Well, and those particular ones I can certainly bring like forward. Sp spending to 10 minutes on something like this where we know it needs to change, it just needs to go. If, if, if you could write them down prior, we could, we could hammer out a lot of those really fast, even probably before the meeting's done. If, you, if there's other errors or if there's even questions, we'll be able to come with answers that would speed up the process quite a bit. Fair enough. Okay, so then we'll uh, defer that to probably our next Cal meeting then? It would be January 10th. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so where are we here? Uh, 9 9.1. Result of the snow removal agreement with Manitoba Transportation Infrastructure be signed. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick, and then Deputy Mayor Morio. So, am I under the impression that if we sign this, that's all we're going to receive from Manitoba government for snow removal? Mr. Harvey. Uh, that would appear so. There might be a slight increase of like three percent to it but more near the cost of what it actually takes to clear the snow and so, uh, that was in a discussion with the superintendent of highways and then also uh, in the meeting with the minister of transportation both indicated that uh, there wouldn't be additional funds so was there not some way they they're measuring the snow and that's how they base their rate uh, no, it's just a lump sum for the year, or for the winter. Used to be. Used to be? Okay. Okay. Did it matter more, yeah? Uh, so, just confirmation, the amount that they're proposing, that's only for snow clearing up till the end of April of 2023, correct? Yeah. Okay. So, with the amount that they're proposing, um, I don't disagree that we as a town should be cleaning Main Street um, as it does benefit the businesses uh, both safety wise and convenience of not climbing over three foot snow banks is what the MTI standard is I believe for, for when they clear it is around three feet when the snow bank is on there so um, so for the amount that they're proposing um, that's basically one snow clearing so it's, it's quite a, an insult to our municipality for them to provide that number with very little or uh, resistance to negotiate on exactly what the true costs are. So I propose like um, when we, uh, next year when we go at this, that we have data of what the last few years of us cleaning the main street is and go, this is what it cost um, to uh, go from here. And if we have to take this up with our MLA and the minister um, in a separate meeting, uh, that's what we need to do because um, I do feel we do need to keep the street clear um, it's just atrocious if it's it's not but what MTI is actually compensating us for it, it doesn't even pay for one snow clearing we've already did that in the first one so um, while I'm not happy with the amount it's a service that we do need to provide and uh, for our businesses that are on Main Street and this is better than nothing at this point. So, um, go ahead. I think your comment on the MLA is a really good point, and to talk to him all winter long because uh, you know, like we did. I did bring it up with my the superintendent. We did bring it up in that minister meeting, but if we get the MLA on board and him keep, he told us to it, to negotiate with MTA. Uh, I remember Main Street and we were told that no, there wasn't any funds for that so we were just going to pave the trench and it wouldn't have been the best, the most efficient use of funds because then highways would have had to repave it in five or ten years time and uh, Emily Wolchuk really went after them on that one and kept hounding them, hounding them and then finally uh, you got the funding opened up for that so that the whole stretch could get paved. So I think if we get him on board and kind of get him repeatedly 
go into them to that would be our best bet for increasing it. Council Medwood. Um, when I read through it, they did make reference to their standards for snow removal, but I didn't see anything within this agreement or a supplement document to share their standards. So I guess the other thing would be um, to maybe, if you guys haven't already reviewed it, to review what their standards actually are so that when you're collecting that data, you can kind of reference it back to their standards to see if there's a significant gap that maybe needs to be, because what was the year their document for their standards was created versus where we are now, and maybe there needs to be some amendment to that, and or maybe we can use their standards to justify, to yeah. Yeah, Go yeah their, their standard is, is basically a, just a four level rating. There's level one highways, two, three, four, and I think this is a level three. So the argument that we get into when we talk about their level of standards is, if we want to fight them on that, they say, well, that's, that's fine. The, the advantage that we're getting now is that they drop the blade on their way to a level one road. If we fight them on their standards, they come back and say, we're not going to blade Main Street on our way to that level one road in the morning anymore. Like they, they do it even now. When we're doing it, they still drop the blade on their way to, the high, on their way to level one highways, and they do it as a favor. We lose that if we fight for standards. So they, they call us on it saying, well, you're not level one, so we're not going to clean it in the morning after a snowfall. And then once they do get around to a level three highway and get it done, uh, they will center plow it and they do not take it away until it reaches over an average of 30 feet. So the, 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 the level goes way, way, way down compared to when the town is doing it. And if we fight them on those levels, they play hardball. They will not clear it after snowfall. Uh, Council Baldwin. So I, under the understanding we have to sand too? We sand after we create it. Yeah. yeah, that's part of our job too, sand. My thoughts on this, I'd rather send them a bill than even enter into the agreement. The agreement's there, wrote and stalled, it's not going to change, you're going to get that money what time of the year it is. I'd send them the bills, then you have the company to talk to. Right now we entered into the agreement, you're done. Council Medley. Uh, the mention of um, their height, I then refer to their um, insurance liability and any documentation on that to see if that lines up for safety with what their standards are because if the liability safety says that's going to put you closer to that two percent range then that might give us leverage as well because they've got a standard that is not meeting a safety need because that main street is very busy so to have a three foot bank and potentially have people climbing over it, that might help play into some potential leverage. But I, I understand where yeah. you're coming from in that yeah. you create havoc potentially by opening the can of worms. Yeah, they, they're, it, liability is also on awareness. They, they have all of their standards online, they have they have their recommendations for walking on a sidewalk, not jaywalking online. They would refer to all of that to say, we've already made the people aware. We've told them to go on online and show this. We're not liable for this reason. Da, da, da. But we can talk for a long time on that. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't advise not going into this agreement. We're, that mean, we've already proven when we didn't have an agreement, the town expended the money to get Main Street done. It got so bad, council decided to do it. And this is fourteen thousand dollars that we'll have. We sign it. We did it without the fourteen thousand dollars in the past. Just a food for thought. Councilor Baldwin. So, is there any other towns that have the same issues? There, where Golf and Russell, or what? What happens there? I go to the Paw. Main Street's terrible there. I'm sorry, but I mean they got more than three foot bank, so I. I really like what's happening here, but uh, to me, the fourteen thousand dollars is kind of a slap in the face, as far as I'm concerned. But. 
Okay, further discussion? Okay, so I'll ask the uh, call a question. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. But I think out of that conversation, we do need to put the data together. We need to provide some information, look at the, you know, uh, any information from MI on uh, standards and so forth and somehow use some of that to our advantage. And maybe this is something that I can even bring forward to the AMM as well. I'm thinking, sorry, that might be a great idea because in our meeting on November 30th, they implied that every small municipality with the main street going through it gets the same contract flat rate fee and you can either choose to do it yourself and provide that better level of service to your citizens or you can wait for us to do it so yeah I think um, AMM might be a good direction to go with it all right thank you okay 10 uh, 10 point one resolve the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment general accounts checks number 29708 to number 29783 totaling $150,739.26 as listed on schedule a payroll accounts checks number 5223 to number 5229 totaling $109,035.25 as listed on schedule b payroll accounts checks number 5232 number 5235 totaling $10,544.31 as listed on schedule C and direct deposits uh, direct deposit payments totaling $26,615.71 as listed on schedule D moved by Councilor Medwood seconded by Councilor Bobick discussion Councilor Medwood and then Deputy Mayor Morial I have a few uh, my first one is, and this is coming off of the CFO's explanation for certain checks document, uh, number 29714, December 8th, Centurion Management and Consulting, uh, Building Inspector Monthly Contract Services. Yeah, we, we enter into a contract with our building inspector for his services. He's paid on a per capita basis and the amount of uh, permits. So that's our... Mr. Lubicki. Mr. Lubicki, so that's one and the same? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's how we pay him, is through this contract? He's a contractor. Okay. <coughs> um, my next one was the... two nine or 723 from the Royal Bank Visa, November 22nd, Flam and Sales, by law enforcement security fence rental. What was that for? Conrad Apartments. That's the rental cost for the Conrad Apartments fence. So we have yet to to look into a rent to own on those fences because I'm sure we've paid for them. I was just going to say how much longer and is there an option for that? <laughs> just. Uh, if I may, don't the, the price of that fence goes on the taxes and and that they've been paid? No, they pay for everything but that. Okay. Okay. So is it in arrears? Are you have more? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, the next entry, Acklands Granger. Is this a local purchase? Because I don't think we have an Acklands Granger anymore. It must not be in that way as well. For the we questions? Can, we can find out where, if that's the question. Uh, well, if not, then I would just tie it into the previous uh, meeting where we mentioned there was a significant amount of purchases notice from Amazon, um, and we'd like to see if it doesn't have to go to tender that we're supporting our local businesses. It, uh, yeah, it, it would come down to a cost. Okay, for the discussion? Yeah, I have more. Okay, go ahead. Uh, 29731 Swan Hills property appraisals, uh, impound vehicle monthly storage fee. 
Yes, I have yet to contact that owner to, to let him know that we're that those vehicles can be destroyed. Okay, so we do actually have something there. Yep. Uh, the next one uh, again, U line, kind of that same question. Can we not purchase brooms uh, locally? It would come down to a cheaper price. Um, do we need to make a resolution on that potentially for supporting our local businesses? That's not legal. So according to Northwest Trade Partnership Agreement, Medicine Hat is now local. So I think. Um, yeah, I think that on that note, I think that you know, uh, at a call meeting, I think council needs to be be introduced to what that what that means. Uh, before I go to director recreation, continue on. Um, I'm somewhat familiar with it, and I do know there's a certain limit, and if you're below that limit, you don't have to go to tender. That's not legal anymore. And we used to have that policy. And if that's the case, are we actually tendering for all of these things? Or are we going to the local businesses and saying... I think at a county we can go through the... Yeah, because we can't get into... You ask the questions and we'll answer what the questions uh, to uh, are specifically how or what the check is written for. If it's to do with policy and all that, then that's a separate discussion that we can discuss at a COM meeting, okay? Okay, fair enough. Uh, the next one, 29773 uh, for Dwayne White, 500 uh, counselor mobile device allowance. Is this the same as the electronic device allowance or is this something different? No, oh, it's the same. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the next one is 29780 uh, for the fairway uh, by law enforcement snow removal. Go ahead. That was a sidewalk that wasn't cleared, uh, so the bylaw officer got a contractor to clear it, and that'll be charged to the business. Okay. And that was my last one for that. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, dire uh, Director of Recreation, did you have something, or you you pulled that back? Yeah, just specifically, it's just a broom. Uh, purchase we couldn't find that fine a bristle in town um, as far as everything else from Amazon typically we get it because of the quantity and the price uh, or something we can't get in town um, and we do we do look in town um, but again the procurement policy states you know best price so that's what we follow okay, thank you uh, Deputy Mayor Morio and then Councilor Barber uh, my question was basically answered um, but uh, for CEO pool, instead of those vehicles being destroyed, we should be able to uh, send so, them off for scrap to recoup yeah. some of that cost. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Council Bobbitt. Uh, just, we bought greater tires, it says here. Uh, it was tractor tire. Uh, they tire. Oh, tra oh, they were tractor tires? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Carried. 10.2. Result of financial statements for the 11 months ending November the 30th, 2022, be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Oh, Councillor Balbit. So this is our interim budget we're looking at here right now. No. I don't know. This is the financial statements. Okay, I'm sorry. Right there. Right, sorry. We're off track. Further discussion? I'm actually okay. It was for the next one that okay. I. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? It's carried. 10.3. Counter Bobbick threw me off. <laughs> You're one, one, one step ahead. Whereas sections uh, 163 of the Municipal Act provide that a council may adopt an interim operating budget to have an effect only until the council adopts the operating budget for the fiscal year. Now therefore be it resolved that the following interim operating budget be adopted for the year 2023. The general operating requirements, general government services, 800,000, Protective services, 1.8 million. Transportation services, 1 million. Environmental health services, 1.2 million. 
Public Health and Welfare Services, $150,000. Regional Planning and Development, $40,000. Resource Conservation and Industrial Development, $80,000. Recreation and Cultural Services, $1.4 million. Fiscal Services, $600,000. And water and service, water and sewer services, 1.3 million. If you remember, those are some of the items that we covered in the touch uh, when we uh, had a crash course on the on the budget. Uh, so moved by Councillor Bobic, seconded by uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion, Councillor Medlin. And to please refresh my memory, because I'm sure it was mentioned in that cow meeting last week, but where did these numbers come from for the interim budget? Okay, well, I'm going to let uh, the CFO answer that, and because uh, he was giving you that crash course. He was. <laughs> <clears throat> Go ahead. Uh, these are just rough numbers because the Municipal Act says that a municipality cannot operate unless it has a budget, and so there's... A understanding that the budget like the actual deadline to get the approved financial plan into the province is not till may 15th so you can't go uh what five or four and a half months without paying any bills so there's provision in the municipal act that the council may adopt an interim budget until it adopts the final budget so these are just rounded off numbers just so that there's the authority to carry on business. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bob. Uh, so what, how do these numbers compare to last year's interim budget? Uh, CFO Gadita. Uh, very similar. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Medwood. Are these numbers, um, and you would probably know best of all anyways, uh, CFO Kanita, but are these numbers likely to cover us for those expenses through to us approving the operational budget? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 10.4. Whereas the 2022 financial plan for the utility operating fund included $172,265 transferred to the utility reserve, be it hereby resolved that the lesser of the $172,265 or the utility operating fund net operating surplus for the 2022 fiscal year be transferred from the utility uh, operating fund to the water and sewer reserve fund once the 2022 fiscal year end has been completed. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.5. Whereas the revenues received from garbage disposal fees significantly, significantly exceeded the expenses incurred for the nuisance ground during the 2022 fiscal year, be it resolved that the excess be transferred from the general operating fund to the landfill capital and closure reserve fund once the 2022 fiscal year end has been completed. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.6. Whereas the capital budget for the year 2022 included $25,000 for sidewalk to be borne by the Federal Gas Tax Reserve, and such sidewalks have been installed at a cost of $8,688.88. Therefore, it resolved that $8,688.88 be transferred from the Federal Gas Tax Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund. Moved by Councillor Medwood. Seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, uh, Deputy Mayor Morial. Uh, Mr. Harvey, uh, did we just <coughs> did we do all the sidewalks we wanted to? And that's why, or so that's why the difference is. We ran out of time. Okay, perfect. That explains the question. Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Ten point seven. Whereas the town incurred a significant general operating fund surplus in the 2022 fiscal year 
and, and deems it advisable to use a surplus to stabilize property tax increases in future years, be it resolved that an amount equal to the general operating fund surplus for the 2022 fiscal year be transferred to the tax stabilization reserve once year-end has been completed. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Does it matter if our, we have a typo in the resolution? I will Complete. clean them up. Fix it. I just fixed it. So, you caught uh, it, future? Yeah. Perfect, thanks. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.8, resolve that the annual grant of $1,000 to the Swan Valley Association for Community Living included in the 2022 financial plan be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. I just want to clarify this was already accounted for in the 2022 budget. We're just getting to paying it. Okay. Yeah. An annual grant. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.9. Whereas subsections 306 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from the Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved the assessment alteration made by Manitoba Assessment Services on December the 15th be made to the 2022 property tax roll with the resulting decrease being $441.81. Moved by Councillor uh, Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Just to clarify, is this a refund that we'll be paying out to them or is it just factored into the next year's taxes? How do we disperse that. CFO Ganita. Uh, yes, it's uh, credited to the property tax roll and uh, the owner has the option whether they want to leave it as a credit for next year or refund it. Thank you. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 10-10. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the work under Clause 252-1A of the Act, and where a significant time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling $546.15. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on the Schedule A be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in that manner under subsections 252.2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective January the 1st. 2023. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Just a question in regards to the portion about interest. So it's currently racking up interest? For as long as the finances charges have been, yeah. Okay, I'm until they pay their property tax bill in full? Okay. Yeah. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Resolved the pursuance of sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act Council go in the committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we have uh, recreation and we also have uh, municipal uh, shared services. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera.
for his own of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 9 41 p.m moved by councillor balbeck seconded by councillor medwood discussion all in favor it's carried we're adjourned thank you everybody and uh, everyone out there have a merry christmas and a happy new year and enjoy your time and your family and friends <laughs>